This video is sponsored by studywebdevelopment.com, which gives you whatever you need to start your own side hustle in becoming the ultimate freelancing developer. And this will include a 100 page guide on how to do your own side business, give you tips on SEO, and even give you website templates to help you keep going right away. Check them out in the link in the description below. And now please enjoy the video. In 2018, there was a total of 23 web developers in the world. By 2023, that number is forecast to reach 27.7 million developers. Everyone's road to living that developer life is different. I've been a web developer for four years. At least, that's what I tell myself. <sighs> You've been a web developer for four years, man. The things that I've experienced and gone through is, to be honest, nothing compared to what I originally expected when I first started learning code. For example, I thought that as soon as you hit the three to four year mark, you already know everything and easily can be considered a senior developer. But let me tell you this, man, that's not true whatsoever. So that's why in today's video, what I want to share with you are three main things that I've learned after being a developer for the last four years. Let's go. Number one, you cannot be afraid to take on challenges, but rather instead look forward to them. If there's one thing that every human being has in common, it's that no one likes to be uncomfortable. Which technically isn't a bad thing, right? So let's go ahead and look at four facts that actually make you comfortable in the first place. For example, familiarity, calmness, routine, and control. When you're comfortable, your brain, what it does is that it actually releases dopamine and serotonin, which is what leads to happy feelings in the first place. But when you're uncomfortable, what does that actually lead to? It leads to fear, anxiety, and stress. Forbes.com said this, why feeling uncomfortable is the key to success. When you are in discomfort, it means you're doing something that others are unlikely to do, right? Why? Because while you're doing something uncomfortable, these people, what are they doing the opposite? They're hiding out in the comfortable zone. When you're uncomfortable, what does that tend to lead to? It leads to actions that lead to success. As a developer, you want to be different. You don't want to be like everyone else. And to be honest, the only way to improve as a developer are to do things that you've never done before to do things that you were unable to do. Why, what does that do? It helps you get better at problem solving. It helps you do things you've never done before so that those things you've never done before you can finally accomplish. If you continue to remain in your comfort zone, what happens is that you just become stagnant. You're not improving, you're not getting better. You're literally just doing the same thing over and over and over again. Then what does it mean to be comfortable? To be honest, it could be anything, man. Uh, for me, it was gaming. I had to stop gaming and I had to literally unplug my computer and put it in my closet in my bedroom upstairs. You know, there's some people who are able to study code consistently. There are people who can't. There are people who are willing to learn new things. There are people who are not. There are people who are always asking for help to get better. And there are people who are just happy where they're at and they don't want to improve. And that's fine too, if you want. Being comfortable is staying exactly as you are and not trying to become the better you. I'm not trying to judge anyone at all whatsoever. The reason I'm saying this is because this was me, yo. I was, and I'm still like this, and I'm fighting, and I'm trying to change this all the time. But if you really want to become the better you, if you really want to become that better developer, you have to make sure that you stay away from anything that's keeping you comfortable, because if not, when that day comes, man, you'll be left behind. And this leads me to point number two, yo. Learn to take risks. So let me go ahead and tell you guys a story, man. At my last job, when I was there the last 24 months, I, I wanted to see my value as a developer. The way I did that was that I actually ended up interviewing with a lot of companies. And out of all the companies I actually interviewed with, I received three job offers. I didn't share this on my channel before because number one, 
<laughs> my boss watches all my videos, which is totally fine. That's awesome. So I couldn't share that. <laughs> and out of all the job offers I received, all right, one was in Charlotte. Secondly, the other one was in Boston, which was for a dental startup company, medical field. The company in Newport Beach was actually willing to pay me an additional $25,000 a year on top of my current salary at the time. But I didn't, <laughs> I didn't take those jobs. The reason I take that job was because, I'm not gonna lie, man. I was so comfortable at my current company, but even more than that, I was scared. I was scared to take that opportunity. I was scared to take that risk from working for a media company to working for a huge company that everyone in the world knows, right? And that terrified me because I didn't believe in myself. I was scared to take that risk. I was terrified. and. And I'm gonna tell you this, man, I regret this to this day because I would even tell my other developers that I work with at the company about the opportunities. And when I told them I rejected that, they were like, what? And when I told them the reason why, which is, yo, this job is just so comfortable, man. It's so laid back. But I, I really, again, I do wish I took that opportunity, but I was just scared to take risks. But learn from my mistake. Don't be like that. Taking a new job isn't easy or staying at a job because it's easy and laid back. That was me but we need to stop waiting until you're ready to move on. It is important to take risks because every risk you take comes with more experience. The more risk you take, the more skills you actually end up learning in the end. In result, what taking a risk can do is that it could present you with the new career opportunities and even new perspectives. Even if that risk results in a failure, that failure alone will teach you an important lesson like how to not approach a particular problem anymore, why to not work for the particular company, or what to not look for in a particular company. Don't be afraid to take risks. Don't be afraid to take on challenges, man. Now, the third thing that I've learned after being a developer for about four years now is this. Imposter syndrome. It's still there. I still feel it. Now, don't get me wrong though. The imposter syndrome I felt on my first month of developer because of the, after the first three or four years, I'll tell you this, even though I still feel imposter syndrome, it is nowhere near how I used to feel. It's because I'm better. I mean, after four years of coding, you better become better than when you were first uh, junior developer, right? No, 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 I'm not joking. You, you, you better like, or else just give up. No, I'm serious, man. But the thing is too, right? You don't know if you, again, are better unless you take those new opportunities. So it's still there, but not as much as anymore. It's not that I know 10 more languages. It's because I just got better at problem solving. And that's the main skill that every developer needs, um, which my boss really ingrained in me. What it means to problem solve, what it means to actually get something done. Even though you're facing a problem you've never solved before. Let me rephrase that. You develop a sense on how to approach problems. Like really, that's one thing that I've learned that I do not approach problems the same way I used to, where it's like you're just looking at a target and you're just shooting your bullets at random spots, hoping that that's the target you need to hit. But as a developer, when you problem solve, you can't do that because you take way too long and you want to be efficient at this. Okay, so anyway, what I'm trying to say, man, is that my problem solving abilities have increased after four years. And I'm telling you this, man, that imposter syndrome will eventually go away. These last four years have been insane from doubting myself every single day to every single week to every single month. I have learned so much, not just about the world of code, but even that much more about myself. And what's even that much more crazy is that the things you learn to do as a developer, you could still apply to everything else that you've done in your life. It's been four years, yo. I can't wait to see where my life will be 12 months from now. What I will be or where I'll be on my fifth year as a developer. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, this is Krishan. This is Life for a Developer, and I'm out. Peace.